Welcome in to the New Orleans Saints podcast, hosted by Aaron Summers and John DeShazer. You'll hear from players, coaches, broadcasters, and writers who cover the team on a daily basis. The New Orleans Saints podcast starts right now. Here's your hosts, Aaron Summers and John DeShazer. Welcome into the New Orleans Saints podcast. I'm Aaron Summers. The Saints have moved on from their game against Jacksonville. The Thursday night game allowed them a lot more time, a couple extra days to rest, reset, and really reassess things as they're heading into this game against the Colts on Sunday. It is a 12 o'clock kick at Indianapolis, Lucas Oil Stadium, and you can watch it on Fox. On Friday's podcast, we are going to be catching up with Fox play-by-play Kevin Kugler, who will be on the call for that game. So that's going to be a fun conversation. But today we have the one and only guard Cesar Ruiz as our podcast guest. He'll join John DeShazer and myself to talk all about this season, where he's at in his career, how he got started in the game of football and his big passion outside of football that you get to see on display actually on Sundays. Caesar, thank you so much for joining us on the New Orleans Saints podcast. It is great to have you. How's the week going? The week's going great. It's, it's been great. Uh, coming in, getting that work in, uh, good preparation. So it's, it's been going good. Is it a little nicer to have a couple days extra after a Thursday night game? Yeah, it definitely is good to you know get your body back, get some extra days of recovery in. So uh, you know, guys are feeling good right now. How much did you guys need to get, I guess, a mental reset? Uh, yeah, I mean, so I mean, the season – I mean, the, se- you never, the season is, like, fast, you know. It, you don't really have time to digest things. You're always on to the next, always on to the next, always on to the next, which is good, you know. It's on to it's just good on to the next mm-hmm. mentalities. But, you know, having a couple extra days to just digest and really lock in and really see what, all right, this is what needs to be fixed, this is what needs to be done, or this is what we're doing well or I'm doing well. And, um, you know, it's really being able to reflect on what has happened up until, you know, we had this extra couple of days off. So uh, that's been cool. It's been good. You know, you guys come in the last game with a, I guess, makeshift offensive line. You got Andrew Speed at left tackle, and you've got Cam Irving at right tackle. Two guys who aren't necessarily in those positions regularly, and and you got you know Max Garcia at um at, at left guard, and you know so basically it's just you and Eric McCoy who are the regulars there. What what was that like, the week of practice, and how did you guys? How were you guys able to I guess get the cohesion together? During the week, because 55 pass attempts with, I think, only one sack for Derek Carr is pretty, pretty substantial. Yeah, I think uh, it really is just, I mean, just during, during that week, it, you don't even notice that there is a, a rotation or a shift in the in the line. You know, uh, you obviously know there's a different person next to you, but the communication, the language we use in the offensive line is all the same. You know, we all, communication is a big thing for us, and that's something we practice in the meeting rooms. It's something we practice in practice, you know, verbal communication. So having that every single week and doing that when you're, um, you know, when you go into the game preparing, uh, it just makes it makes it a lot more, you know, there's not really, doesn't come doesn't come up as an issue when you're playing with new guys because everyone's been communicating with each other for however long they've you know, been in that position. So is that the proof of what you guys say, that offensive linemen are the smartest people in the building? Is, is that the <laughs> proof of that? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I wouldn't tell Cam Jordan that. Oh, yeah. Cam don't like offensive linemen. Not at all. You had to try out a new position this year, moving over to right tackle. How difficult was that, or how much did you enjoy that opportunity? Yeah, it was uh, um, – it, it wasn't bad. Like, it wasn't like – it wasn't. A, it was something that like we joked about as a offensive line. Like uh, I would, I would go, like throughout the years, I would go on scout team and you know do like a rep at tackle just for just just to let, just let me do it because like mm-hmm. coach, I just want to go. I never get to play tackle. I'll, ne- I'll never play tackle. You know that was my. I've never played tackle. So like let me just try it a couple times. Like and like so I've like done a few pass sets in practice, like three maybe throughout the years and uh, getting the game. It's like hey, see you gotta go to tackle, and I was like. This is real. It's about to happen. So, I mean, I just went out there. I was like, all right, let's go play tackle. I mean, it, it wasn't enough time to just sit there and be like, oh, get nervous or get scared. Like, no, nah, like, that's the first of all, that's the wrong time to do it uh, in that situation. It's just like, why? It's kind of just something like you always wanted to do. So, go ahead and do it. That sounds like a contract situation to me. That sounds like a <laughs> bargaining chip to me. I mean, I'm, I ain't, you know, I ain't nobody's agent, but I'm just saying. <laughs> Uh, I mean, it's, uh, it's a good care of me right now, so I'm, I'm all right right now. I was going to say, he just got his new contract. <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm, I'm all right right now. 
you're somebody that played center though your whole collegiate career yeah did you ever think you're going to get to the league and play guard no uh, i mean i didn't think i'd ever play tackle i mean <laughs> yeah I, i've never thought i'd do a lot of things um but i'm doing them so uh i mean it's obviously a blessing uh it's fun though because it's like all right, I, have, I have experience now i can now I, even though i've only had one drive at right tackle I go around telling people, oh, I play everything. I do I do it all. I play in every single position. And it's fun to say that, you know. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's been fun. I've, I've been able to, you know, play different positions and uh, things I never thought I'd do. I've mm -hmm. only played center my entire life, and now I've played pretty much all three. So it's, uh, it's been kind of fun. Yeah, you had to play some center here when Eric got injured. And you know, as you just mentioned, right tackle and right guard. And, and, and how much does that, I guess, add to your confidence? Because now you specifically know the responsibilities of each of those positions. Yeah, um, it's definitely it's definitely great because uh, as you get older in, in this in this game and you start to learn the game more, uh, you you start to learn what everyone else is doing. So when I when I had to go to right tackle, I knew what Ram like his assignments were. I knew what his job was. I knew uh, to an extent like what his technique is because I hear it in the meeting all day. So you know just hearing those things it makes it like when you go on the field it just makes it like. I've heard all this before. I not, so even though I've never done it, like I can do it because I've heard it and I've seen him do it. How wild was it when you saw Colin Saunders jump on the line with you guys? I love it. Yeah, I love it because um, I remember the first time he did it was in practice, and um, uh, his play call is like super simple. Like when he's in there, like <laughs> it's not like because he doesn't understand. It's just like it does. You know, it's not much you have to say. So, but what, his first play in the huddle, uh, we said the craziest, like longest play. Derek said the craziest longest play you could think of, just to mess with him. He just turned around and walked out of the huddle. Okay. He said, "I don't think this is for me." <laughs> so it was funny. Uh, so we messed with him on that one, but it's great because he's, I mean, he, he's extremely athletic and he's a guy that's like he's a freak athlete. I mean, I didn't. I remember there's, video, there's videos of him doing like backflips. Uh, mm -hmm. um, I didn't even know I was him. I remember those videos. I didn't even know I was him. So I remember him. There's videos of him doing backflips. His high school highlights are insane. Uh, people, probably people don't even know about that. His high school highlights are nuts, and it's not him playing D-tackle. Uh, it's him playing running back, so it's nuts. So, uh, yeah, he's definitely a freak athlete, and it's definitely good to have a guy like that who wants to do that uh, in those situations. Yeah, he says he's played five positions in the NFL, tight end, fullback, running back, um, defensive tackle, obviously, and I think I can't remember, linebacker, and linebacker. He said he's played all of those. Did you? How much did you look at the rep when Taysom runs the touchdown behind his block and how much that dude did not want to be blocked by Colin. Oh yeah, cuz I mean <laughs> yeah, I'm and in all honesty too, like I if I if if I'm a DB and I see I see Colin running at me, I'm I'm like, dog. I can't believe it cuz <laughs> I'm pulling right I'm right I'm right next to him. Me and him are right next to each other. So I, he hit his guy and I'm like, there's a lot of space here. I I know he about to just walk in right now. I look to my right, somebody right there. I was like, yeah, you're not making the tackle. And Taysom just walked in and I'm just looking at uh you know, Colin, we call him Bink. I'm just looking at him. And I'm like, man, he love this. Like, I just love seeing that. He's like, he he's enjoying every bit of this, you know. So taking the D line and putting him out in fullback and making them block and they love it, it's it's a great feeling. It was really funny because there was no running backs, no wide receivers in on that play. It was basically just linemen, him and a couple tight ends. Yeah. So yeah. that was really fun, getting creative for sure. Going back to when you first started playing, when did you fall in love with the game of football? I fell. Up, I started playing when I was ten years old, and I, I fell in love when I was ten. Uh, I I played the position when I first started playing football. I played the position nobody wanted to play. I played center. All the kids, everybody laughed at me like, "Oh, you're playing center because nobody wanted to do it." And I had signed up late that year, and they're like, "No, nobody wants to play center." Like, so you do it, and I did it. I was like, it's kind of fun, you know. I'm seeing wrong with this. It's kind of cool, and then just fell in love with it immediately, and just been been going at it ever since. What did you like about that position? It was the only one they told me to play. Like it was the only one I played. You know, it wasn't like guard or tackle. I I literally played center from that moment all the way until uh, you got to the NFL. Yeah, <laughs> like so it was fun. Like, I remember um, eighth grade spring ball the only time that because I played defense too. I used to play defense too. And but eighth grade spring ball is the only time I said, you know, what? I'm not playing center. I asked my coach, let me play tackle for like four games. So I played like eighth grade. I played like tackle for like four games because I I got tired of playing center. Had early injuries in your career, obviously. How much of a setback was that? But uh, last season, remember, last season was yeah. my first ever like <laughs> injury. It was crazy because I was like, I thought I was, I thought I was indestructible, right? I was like, yeah, I'm indestructible, right? And then um, my injury and like how it happened, and everything happened. I'm like that, 
like this is how my season ends, huh? So it was crazy because um, up until that point, I mean, I had a streak. I had a streak going uh, from my rookie year all the way up to that point of not missing a play, mm-hmm. of not missing a play. Like obviously, my rookie year, I was in and out of rotation, like in uh, in those situations. But in terms of consecutive, I was like, man, I'm kind of nice so streak going, uh, and I enjoy it. So, um, but like it's. It definitely uh, gives a different aspect to you, you know, unless you know, like, hey, it's possible for everybody. You know, it's uh, no one is uh, safe from this. So, uh, yeah, it definitely gave me a whole different perspective, but it allowed me to really have a different type of grind. It allowed me to really appreciate things more because I, for the first time, I was able to experience, like, what it felt like to have, like, you know, my season cut short or have the game taken away from me for a while. Now, are we ever going to see you at a skill position? Because I, your, your position coach in college, this is what he, I remember this, this is what he told me. He said, look, he said, now, see, he's, a, he's, a, he's a great offensive lineman, but, you know, he, he, pretty, he pretty like those skill position guys. He kind of, you know, he, he kind of one of those dudes. So, you know, you have to watch him because he'll go out there and, you know, he, he liked to look good and he liked to play good when he, he – liked, he liked to look good when he's playing, though. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean – He's got a smile on his face, folks. Yeah, I mean <laughs> – I, w- I would love to. Uh, <laughs> I would love to. I would, whatever, however creative way you want to use me, I'd love to. You know what I'm saying? You want to put me out there at wide receiver or something for just be tight end, do whatever you want. Hey, I'm 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 with it all. So, uh, I mean, it'd definitely be great. You know, it'd definitely be great because that's another dream I get to live. So, living all my dreams right now. I know, J.D., you mentioned your, your earrings when he walked in. He's talking about you being one of those pretty boys. You got a new contract, a little bigger bag. How much of that is going into the looks, what your game day fits are? Uh, see, y'all y- y- have noticed the game day fits. Y'all y- have noticed. I, I see people are noticing it. People brought up my attention before. Uh, it, I, I'm really wearing uh, my game day fits now because I, I wore them last year, but we never took pictures. So I was just like, all right, I'm just I'm just gonna knock. Wait, wear did, are you repeating everyone from last year then? No, so I had outfits from last year that I would wear, and I was like, all right, we're not really doing anything, so I just stopped wearing it completely. I'm like, all right, no one's, I'm not, there's no pictures, there's no nothing, so I'm just gonna wear my uh, sweatsuits, and <laughs> I felt like this is a good opportunity for me to really, you know, like, cause being an offensive lineman, you know, we're not really, we don't get any like shine on TV. We don't get any of that, you know. So I feel like, you know, people don't really know about it. So I feel like this would be a good opportunity for me to really show people like who I am and express myself, you know, just like, hey, like, you know, I'm styles, so I like clothes, you know, I like to do stuff like this too. And just really just like have be vulnerable with everybody and show everybody like, hey, like, um, this is this is also a part of me since, you know, now we're showing people like, you know, walking in and stuff like that. So I, I kinda use that as an opportunity to, like just express myself more and just let people understand like who I am. How much thought goes into it? Is, is that a night before plan or is that like two, three days before plan or is that a get up in the morning and this is how I feel plan? Oh, no, every outfit is planned out. Every outfit is planned out. I know what I'm wearing on uh, Sunday. I, I know what I'm wearing next week. Uh, so it's planned out. Um, space Wait, so how, is, you planned it out. You? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I plan I'm like, all right, I'm, right, I'm going to coordinate this. Let me make sure I don't wear none of this jacket. Make sure I don't wear these jeans put on the hanger and just put it away from everything else. That way I don't mess up the outfit. And I normally play them like two weeks ahead. Like it's not like a, a long thing I do, you know, I'm not mm-hmm. sitting there for like hours. I'm like, all right, I'm probably wear this this week. Definitely going to wear this suit this week, you know, stuff like that. And you plan it down to the shoes. Yeah. Jewelry. Yeah. Um, pretty much depends. Like, like in terms of like jewelry, I'm not, when it comes, when it, it's like away games and stuff, I don't want to be, I kind of like want to wear suits. I want to look, um, my business look, you mm-hmm. know, and then uh, so I use that as more of like, you know, I don't really wear my jewelry. I don't really wear anything. Then home games, I'm like, all right, it's, t- it's an opportunity for me to express like my fashion sense and my stuff like that. So um, and in terms of like just like the accessories, I might just like, hey, I'm not going to wear nothing mm-hmm. or um, that's that's like a game time decision. That's like a night before or a couple days before decisions. Like, I don't know. I might not. Depends how I feel. Who's the best dressed on the team? Uh, it's a, It's a few, man. Um, I respect a lot of people's styles. Um, I respect Demario's. Um, Jameis has stepped it up for real. He's easy. He made a statement this year. Um, Alvin, Alvin's the guy who, um, who I, I, I say Alvin because we have similar like fashion sense, like in terms of like what, like things we're interested in and like things we wear. So he's a guy that I see, like we have, cause we talk about clothes all day. Mm-hmm. So Alvin's a guy, uh, he's definitely high on my list. Um, Cam for sure. I think those are the, those are the, I think they're four, right? 
him, DeMario, Alvin, three. So those are three that, um, that are high up there on my list. How could you not say you? Oh, because I feel like it's already, like, I don't have to. Oh, okay. Oh, I, okay. I got you. I got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You. you know, <laughs> I feel like I don't really have to. And, uh, yeah, I, I feel like I don't really have to, you know. Who do you sit next to in the locker room? Uh, at game day or here? Here. Oh, Jameis. How is that? <laughs> amazing. <laughs> it's amazing because um, it's – I could come in one day and not be feeling great or, like, you know, I come in, like, I got a little cold or I, I'm coming in, like, I'm a little tired. He's not tired. And he he got energy, and um, he's always there. To like, he's just a, he's he's overall a great teammate. And being though I get to experience it all day, uh, is amazing. Like he's there to uplift you at all times. He's always gonna have you smiling, and it's just it's just great to not only have him as a teammate, but to have him as my locker mate is was was amazing. Who's the funniest guy in the locker room? James. It's not close either. James. Oh, is he? Because I mean, I've heard I heard this, this, Cam. Well, I've heard Cam slice some people. I mean, slice them up pretty good. Cam Jordan? Yeah, Cam Jordan. As a now, nah, Cam's funny. Yeah. Cam's funny, but I he's not like hilarious. You know, like <laughs> James is I got hilarious. You. I got you. Like, I got you. Cause James you know? is, yeah, I, I got you. Yeah, I, like, yeah there's like, a difference. James is hilarious. All right. Who would you allow to date any a member of your family? Who would I allow to yeah. date a member of my family? Uh I mean, there's a lot of good guys in the locker room, right? Uh, I think Brian. Brian. Was he? Yeah, I think he's he's a good kid, man. He's a good guy, man. I, I think I'd let him date one of my uh, said siblings or uh, either one. I mean, you know, you, you, you daughter. You're the man. You you protective. Yeah, yeah. I, I I think he's a good guy. I thought I'd let him. You were just talking about the rookie duties and different things that people have to do. Brian Brzee being one of them. One of his things he has to do is bring wings every every week for the the defensive line. Who you have any rookies that are doing stuff for you? Uh, yeah. Uh, but it's not like uh nothing crazy. Um, you know, just you know, just uh, they get the snacks for like our room. Um, you know, fun stuff. Just get some snacks for the room, and um, that's really that's really just about it. You know, get some snacks for the room. We're not like uh. We don't like make them do crazy stuff like carry all our pads and stuff. <laughs> don't do no weird like crazy stuff like that. It's like, hey, we'll get some snacks, you know. It's just duties that it's just, it makes it fun too. Cause it's not like no one anyone hates it. Like no one hates doing. They don't hate doing it. It's like we all did it and it's just fun. And it's just like so ultimately like, hey, I'm here to help my guys out. So they, everybody always feels good about it. What's the snacks in the old line room? Cause I mean, I can't, you know, I, <laughs> what, I, I don't. You know what? I take that back. I don't even know if you ought to say that because you might get. You know, they might start weighing you guys a little bit more more than you should. Yeah, I ain't going to say too much because they ain't going to start weighing me. All I say is I, I get them oatmeal cream pies. That's, that's my snack of choice, so that's it. But, yeah, I ain't going to say too much, though. I don't want them to start, you know. Yeah, Brzee <laughs> said he was getting honey buns, a lot of honey buns for the defensive line. Yeah, we got honey buns in our room, too. Yeah. When you started playing, you're here with the Saints – Kind of like up and down, getting used to the new position. How comfortable do you feel like you are with this team, this organization? Yeah, um, yeah, definitely. It's, it's crazy that I'm in like I'm already in my fourth season. Yeah, it's just time they they didn't lie to me when they said it's gonna fly by. Um, so just seeing you know um, from where I was at when I was twenty, twenty one years old to a rookie year to now is um is definitely I've I've become more. Uh, comfortable with the position, more familiar with it. Um, and I've been surrounded with some of the greatest coaches, you know, some of the greatest people I could be around in terms of my position, like Doug Marone and having Ja, ja Ree Evans here uh, every single day. It's uh, really, really helped me and uh, it's helped boost my confidence overall, just uh, just having those guys around. Have you mentally put a number on the number of years you want to do in the NFL? or Man, I want to do it till my legs fall off. Man, <laughs> I want, you know what I'm saying, I want to, my goal, my goal, and um, my goal is to go down as like you know one of the best, you know, and um, however long that takes, you know, um, I want to do this for a long time though. Um, I want to do this for a very long time. I don't, like, I don't see myself uh, stopping any uh, time soon. What was it? I got here twenty twenty, like I I I'm, I see myself still playing like the thirties, like twenty thirty. You know what I'm saying? That's that's when I still uh, I want to play for a really long time for. The, so yeah. So you still have a lot of fun. Like you just love playing football. Well, yeah, I feel like a kid out there. I'd yeah. be having the time of my life. 
I'll be having time in my life playing football. It's just, it's just like, like I said, we're, we're men and we get to play a kid's game. And it's just, I just have fun. Oh, I just have fun. What do you do for fun outside of football? Video games. Yeah. I just play video games and um, uh, fashion. Like, you know, look at clothes and stuff. Just try to, I do like my own, like put outfits together. I do this little thing where I like, well, put some outfits together on my phone and just see like, oh, how would this look? How would this look? You know? So he's out here doing fashion shows at his house by himself. Yeah, I don't put the clothes on. It's like on my computer. So like, it's like you'll you're like you Photoshop. You like crop the outline of a shirt, oh and then like you'll stack it up together, like on a, like a white on a white sheet, like sort of like how like um, uh, was it like stylists do? Mm-hmm. And I just kind of like, okay, how would this look if I got this outfit? Or how, you know? And nine times out of ten, I don't buy any of it. I just like doing it. I'm like, ah, that's nice. So, have you considered modeling second career? Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I could do it. I could do it now. I do it now. You know what I'm saying? I can do it now. <laughs> Actually, don't be surprised. He says humbly. Yeah. Don't be surprised. Y'all see me do some modeling stuff. I can believe know, that. Next, next, before next season, you know what I'm saying? After this year. You reached out? Somebody reached out to you? Was- I've, 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 they've inquired. They've inquired. Mm, the tease. So, it's going to be fun. <laughs> to be continued. Yeah. Before we let you go, who's been the most influential person in your life? Man, most influential person in my life? Uncle. Okay. My uncle, he uh, he really, uh, he really showed me uh, how to be not a man, but he really showed me how to conduct myself as a professional. Um, uh, he 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 showed me discipline. Uh, he would, and you know, obviously my mom showed me these things, right? Um, but like in terms of like a male figure, I, I would say because in terms of like most influential person, I'll say it's my most influential male figure in my life mm-hmm. because he. Was he would call me, show me your bed. Is your bed made? My bed wasn't made. It chewed me out. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't get it. What are you talking about? Like, why do you care if my bed's made? And then it all just started making sense. And it was all just like everything he did, everything he taught me was like a lesson. And uh, you know, he helped me like you know learn how to be professional. Not in terms, not as an athlete, but like carry myself in a professional setting around like people. So definitely my uncle. Not only are you professional going about your business, everyday life, but you just bring so much joy. You seem like you're just so happy all the time. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. As your teammates talk about it. They just love having you around. How do you maintain that? It's just me, though. Like, it's, it's just me. Like, I'm not, like, uh, I don't have to try. Mm-hmm. You know, I just, I wake up every morning and drive here, drive to the facility and just, like, just, I'm just happy. I'm like, man, look what I get to do today. You know, it's a, uh, like, you can complain, like, people, like, I mean, like, obviously, like, yeah, it works hard and stuff like that, but, like, look what I get to do today. I get to go play football. This is my job, so it's fun. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just happy what I'm doing. Thank you so much of for course. the time. We appreciate it, and good luck this weekend. Thank you. Really appreciate the time from Caesar. He said he was running off to go get those wings that are in the, the defensive line room before they started their meeting. So hopefully he got some. We look forward to tomorrow's podcast. As mentioned before, play-by-play for NFL on Fox. Kevin Kugler will be on with John DeShazer and myself. We'll get into a little bit more of this matchup against the Colts and talk about what's been said at practice this week and what the Saints are focused on as they're looking to get that win and get to 500 after week eight. Thanks for listening to the New Orleans Saints podcast. Join us three times per week on NewOrleansSaints.com, the Saints mobile app, or you can download the podcast on iTunes. We'll see you next time right here on the New Orleans Saints podcast.